78-64, the Gamecocks defeat the Alabama Crimson Tide to move to 19-2 on the year and 6-2 in the SEC. Coach, thanks for joining us. Let's begin with that second half. You took a nine-point lead into the locker room. Alabama was coming off at night uh, against Tennessee where they battled back from a 15-point deficit, closed their game against the Volunteers on a 16-2 run to win it, so you knew they were capable of the comeback. What did you guys do to hold them off and, and make sure that that lead stayed with you throughout the second half? We tried to give the game away with some of those silly turnovers we had with five minutes to go in the game. I mean, just absolutely embarrassing turnovers. Uh, but, you know, Michael uh, is playing with unbelievable uh, confidence right now as a player. And, uh, you know, think about the offensive rebounds and the free throws coming down the stretch. But then when they cut it, I think it was either five or six, and he six. comes down and makes that three. Took a lot of courage not to make the shot, to take the shot. Uh, and it takes even more courage to make it. But... Uh, uh, I'm just real proud of our guys. We, we didn't make free throws. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, you know, for us to miss so many free throws, but um, it's uh, uh, great. I'm, I'm telling you, Andy, how much fun is it to have 18,000 people in this building? It's uh, uh, so thankful to our fans that they come out and support our guys and then real proud of our guys that uh, they played a very good Alabama team. That, that's not just an okay team. That's, a, that's a, like NCAA caliber team. And uh, for us to be able to come back and win this game was, uh, was, was great. The career had 20 points, 11 rebounds, but just the way he was battling around the basket yeah. in that second half, you almost lose sight of the fact he actually was 3 of 12 from the floor, but getting to the free yeah. throw line as often as he did. When he's playing like that and attracting so much attention down low, how does that change what you can do offensively where he's become such a threat inside and out for you? Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about when I, when I said that. He didn't have a very good shooting night. Didn't, didn't shoot it very well but has the courage to shoot that three and make it when, when you have to have a basket. And, uh, but he got to the line, um, you know, he's making his free throws. He, he, he's relentless on the glass. I mean, Michael, uh, you need to have some big boys to, to prevent him from rebounding. Uh, uh, he, he's, uh, you know, and Sindarius played well. We played well. That's a yeah. good team. We had to play well to beat him. And, um, you know, if we would have made some free throws today, um, you know, I, I'm not saying we went easy. Uh, but, you know, it wouldn't be such an adventure there at the end. But in a sense, did free throws help you win that game? Because you look down, Alabama had four players foul out, so you, yeah. you got them having to negotiate foul trouble pretty yeah. much the entire night. Might not have made the percentage of free throws that you wanted, but getting there in the volume of you, that you did, is that something that you thought swung that game? Absolutely. Getting to the line was something that uh, when we rebound and we get to the free throw line, that's who we are. That tells you that we're playing well. You know, and, you know, coming down the stretch, P.J. was phenomenal uh, in the second half. You know, aggressive and confident and made some plays, made some shots, attacked. Um, you know, Michael, Sandaris, the guys just played their tails off. Mendogas was all over the place today. I don't know what his stat line looks like, but I thought Mendogas played real well today. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, just real good win, real, real good, real good win. Teams have been uh, drawing you in threes lately, shooting well above their percentages. Alabama finishes 6 of 24, 25%. Mm -hmm. What did you do well guarding the arc this time around? Well, we guarded the ball screen. You know, that's, uh, we, uh, we, weren't, we, we weren't perfect, but they ball screen you every single play. And we had to be, be better on the ball screen uh, to keep the ball out of the paint. The threes they made were when they got into paint and they kicked them out. Those are the threes they made. Uh, but we, we were in line. We were extending their offense. They were having to play further out on the floor, which now the ball screen isn't as effective because it's so far away from the basket. Um, you know, and uh, uh, just uh, we just played, Andy. Our, our guys were, they did their jobs. What well, we've practiced all year to try and do on offense and defense, uh, they came out and tried to execute that today. Chris Silva yeah. had his first career start and finished one shot of a career high, 12 points. He made all four of his field goal attempts. He was one of the few who yeah. uh, shot at a good percentage from the free throw line, four of six, and he also chipped in six rebounds. I know you're not big on getting hung up on who starts and not because the Kevishes did get a lot of those minutes down the stretch. But what prompted you to, to make that change after uh, 20 games where you'd had a lot of success running out the same five and, and giving Chris the start? Do I reserve the right to not be happy with some people sometimes? And for some guys and maybe do their jobs the right way and you got to play them. I, I just haven't been happy. I don't think we're starting games. I don't think we're starting the second halves with a, too, a, any enthusiasm whatsoever. Uh, the one thing Chris brings every single day, just like Michael, is an unbelievable motor and unbelievable enthusiasm. And uh, 
Uh, so we threw him in there, and, and I thought he would, and his ability to cover in the ball screen. I thought this is a game of ball screen defense is huge. Uh, Chris was phenomenal uh, in his ball screen coverage, and uh, it allowed us to get off to a good start. Yeah, they got that, the, those nimble, agile big men that set and roll so many mm -hmm. screens. Um, you wanted better point guard play on mm -hmm. both sides of the floor. Mm -hmm. We talked on Carolina calls. Marcus Stroman, one point. Six rebounds, though, mm -hmm. and P.J. Dozier, we touched on him. He finishes seven points, five rebounds, two assists, but just one turnover mm -hmm. in 17 minutes. Overall, your thoughts and how the point guards played tonight. Yeah, I, I challenged them at halftime. At halftime, I think combined they had one point, one assist, and like two rebounds. That was their stat line at halftime. And I told them at halftime, I said, you guys got to play better for us, man. You two guys are earned the right to play. You guys are good players. You need to go out there and be more aggressive and, and attack and Give them credit. You know, Marcus wasn't great on offense, but Marcus played, rebounded, attacked off the dribble, which made him run. And then P.J. came in and, in the second half, and, you know, he made some, some – we kept telling P.J., when they're guarding you with the little guy, you don't have to drive to the rim. Get it to the 10-foot mark and jump up and shoot it over the top of him. And he did that a couple times, uh, um, you know. But then he was aggressive in the open court. And uh, we, they're good – they're great kids that are going to be great players – and we just got to stick with them, and they'll eventually play up to the abilities that they have. Well, Coach, you got the win here on Legends Weekend. It's yeah. something that you take so much pride yeah. in, and, and how grateful are you to deliver the win with all these great former letter winners in town to, to put forth an effort that's representative of your program and representative of the success that, that they had had to sort of pave the way for you guys? Well, we, we get that. I told those guys last night, and, and I'm sorry, not last night. We were together last night, but I told them this morning at breakfast, you know, we, we get this beautiful locker room and this beautiful arena uh, that, that we can get 18,000 people to come to. We wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't for the sacrifices of all those guys that didn't get to play on television, that got to play in small bandbox kind of gyms, that, um, that, that won championships, sweat, blood, tears, everything. Uh, to, you know, Gary Greger said a story yesterday about the locker room bench. It was just one of those <laughs> wooden benches where like nine guys sat next to each other on. You know, now we have, like, unbelievable personalized stalls. And the story Gary's saying is about a coach who kicked the bench. If I tried to kick a bench in the locker room, there ain't no bench to kick. I'd be in trouble. And uh, um, it's, it, it's about them. And, and our guys seeing all these great players that used to play here and realizing how good we got it because of them uh, continues to add to the positivity that we have to put around our guys so they can go out there and perform the right way. Our coach, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you. And Coach Frank Martin here on the Carolina Ford Dealers Locker Room Report again. Gamecock 78 to Crimson Tide 64. We're back after these words from Sandsbury Ice Center is on the Gamecock IMG Sports Network.